Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Pokemon Red version. Uh, I mean like last year I played Sapphire. I think I promised I was going to do Red, but here I am doing it. Uh, I've already defeated the entire game and of course this is post commentary again. I edit out like every single wild encounter that I don't fight. So that saves like half an hour of uh, gameplay. And this is actually the story of where Hyjella was born. I mean, not this Let's Play here, but Pokemon Red is where the name Hyjello was born. <laughs> it's kind of weird, because, like, I remember I got this game, and then I was like, I don't remember if the name before me was Hyjello. I doubt that. But, I mean, I can't verify that anymore. I, I really doubt that, though, because it's such an obscure name. But, yeah, I think I was just looking around the house, I saw, like, a little box of Jello, because that was back when my dad would, like, make Jello for himself all the time. And I was like, Jello, and then I don't know why, I was like, hi, Jello, ha ha ha, I'm a silly little six-year-old goofball, but, yeah, that's where Hi Jello was born, then I'm like, Tapioca Pudding, let's name Blue Tapioca Pudding, even though, I, I always want to refer to him as Gary instead of Blue, because... He looks just like fucking Gary on the anime, and I used to watch the anime all the time. Like, uh, I think the Gen 1 or Indigo League anime, that's probably my favorite TV show ever. Like, I would go to the grocery store and, like, they would have free kids vids to rent. I'm, I might be repeating stuff that was in the Pokemon Sapphire Let's Play, but I really don't remember what I spoke about at all, but... Yeah, I would just rent, like, Pokemon movies. They had, like, six or seven different movies to rent that were Pokemon movies, and, like, I would just grab a different one every time. I would usually grab the same, like, one or two, and those would be, like, the the one for, like, Cinnabar Island and the Blastoise, or the one with the, the like, right where they get to the Pokemon League with the, the Moltres and Marowak episodes. Those were always my favorites to rent. But here we are grabbing my starter, the options are Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur. And it really upsets me that they're in that order because, like, Bulbasaur is first in the Pokedex, and then I believe it's Charmander and then Squirtle, but they just decided to put fucking Bulbasaur on the way right, and Squirtle in the middle, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. And, uh, <laughs> we're gonna give Squirtle quite an interesting nickname, because that's the nickname I gave the same time I did my High Jello playthrough. And I named it Rocket R. I, I mean, that obviously has to do with, like, Team Rocket and the R on their shirt. Um, I guess I was a fan of Team Rocket back then. <laughs> I mean, I still am, but... Like, well, kids, man, what do you know? What do you do? So, obviously Gary, I'm gonna just fucking call him Gary instead of Blue or Tapioca. Eh, I might call him Tapioca. But obviously he's gonna grab the Pokemon with the uh, super effective attacks on me, even though in this first battle we don't have any super effective attacks on each other. But it's weird, because like in the newer Pokemon games, like, when your, po when your starter Pokemon's already level 5, they already have, like, a special elemental attack, so like... I, I don't know if it would be Bubble or Water Gun for um, Squirtle, but at level 5 he would already have a Water type attack, and it's like, oh, so if they want to remake uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Green, I guess that option isn't there anymore, because then Gary would just kick your fucking ass. But yeah, here we are, Spam and Tackle. Uh, well, I'm trying to remember how the Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby were, if the starters had their special attack at level 5 already, or if they uh, delayed it just for that game. Because I know sometimes Pokemon games will change when they get attacks at certain levels. Um, usually it's just to like get more attacks sooner than later, but I don't know if they would delay starters getting special attacks just for the narrative of the game. But. I guess on uh, Ruby and Sapphire, they give you a little bit of time to train your Pokemon before you can do the first rival battle, so... I don't know too much about that, but... Yeah, here's the first route. I don't catch a single Pokemon, because I don't have any Pokeballs, but... I don't think I w I mean, uh, you do have to get, like, ten Pokemon to get the HM for Flash. 
and that is kind of annoying. But, I mean, I do that eventually anyways. But yeah, I think what's great about Pokemon Red, and I guess like, uh, I don't remember too much with like silver and gold, but like, Sapphire does that too, but like, it's, I don't think it's as bad, but like, like, you just have to figure out a lot of stuff without, like, any guides. I mean, I don't talk to, like, many NPCs or read any of the signs. So, I don't know if the game really is as hard as I'm making it out to be. Because, like, okay, yeah, you probably would check out the Pokemart, but it's like, how would you know to check that? Like, there's just a lot of instances like that where it's like, how do you know to do that? Unless you spend an hour doing trial and error. Like, you would probably just be wandering around, like, waiting for the game to tell you what to do. And, like, I see people online, well, I guess, like, the couple times I go on the Pokemon Reddit, which is, like, just a cesspool of fan art and shit. But, like, I guess, I, I don't know. I see it online that people think that, like, the first generation is, like, really hard. And I would disagree with that. Because... Um, yeah, I guess just in this playthrough, since I said I already beat it, maybe, like, the first three gyms, it's a bit tough. I do white out a couple times at the beginning. Um, I guess Verdian Forest can be a pain in the ass if you're not prepared. Like, if you have Squirrel or something, and then you keep getting poisoned, but if you catch multiple Pokemon, it shouldn't be as big of an issue, because... Pokemon you catch are still, like, the same level as the Pokemon of the forest and the Pokemon that the trainers have. But, like, really once you get past the third gym, the game, like, is super easy. As long as you have, like, three Pokemon on your team that are all, like, at balanced levels, like, you can pretty much just, like, swamp through the entire game. At least I did on this playthrough. Um... Yeah, I don't know, like, I, this, like, my team that I'm using here, it's, like, not my favorite Pokemon, just, like, how I did it in Sapphire. Because, like, in, uh, the first-gen games, like, Pokemon's movesets are kind of hard to, to, really pick, because there's not a lot of attacks to use. There's the physical special split in the first three Pokemon games, or generations, and, like, TMs you can only use once, and a lot of the TMs are kind of shit. So, uh, I'm trying to think of stuff. Like, like, I would love to use the Pokemon Weezing, although you do get them very late. But, like, you can't really use them too well because he only gets, like... Like, I don't think Sludge Bomb exists. Like, the best Poison-type move he would have is Sludge. And, like, that's only base 60 or something like that. And I don't think Weezing can learn, like, Flamethrower or Thunderbolt in these games. But... Yeah, that kind of sucks, because I, I would want to use Weezing. And then, a lot of my favorites are actually exclusive to Pokemon Blue, which is kind of weird. Like, um, I I always liked the design of Sandshrew. That was, like, one of my favorite designs. Like, I, I wanted to be Sandshrew for Halloween when I was in kindergarten. Um, obviously, that didn't work out. I mean, I mean it's not obvious, but... I asked my parents to buy me, like, uh, we went to a fabric store and there was, like, some golden fabric. I still have it in my bedroom somewhere. I'm actually looking at it. It's, like, hidden under all my baseball hats I don't wear, but... <laughs> yeah, I just had, like, <laughs> fucking golden fabric. And then we just poked out two holes for my eyes. But, like, we didn't really, uh, mark where to put the holes. So then if I, like were to wear it over my body, it would, like, cover my entire back, but, like, where the eye holes are positioned, it would just, like, go to my, uh, I guess my chest, like, right under my nipples or whatever, but, I mean, oh, you could wear it backwards, but then it's, like, it would fall off immediately because there's no space on my back, unless I were to lean forward and walk all macho. But I, I just ended up being a cat that year, I think I ended up being a cat for a few years, and... And then I think it was, like, uh, my third grade Halloween. Not at school, but just, like... I wanted to... <laughs> I don't know. I was, like, super lazy, and, like... I mean, I wanted to go trick-or-treating, but I think I just, like, fucking, like, tied some fabric around my, uh, chest, and, uh... 
I just went as a fucking, like, Christmas present or some shit. Uh, but, I mean, like, if you live in the Midwest, you have to wear a fucking, like, jacket when you go trick-or-treating, because it gets so cold at fucking 7 p.m. on October 31st. So, there's a good chance your costume's gonna be covered anyways, so... Uh, I don't know, that was kind of an embarrassing moment. That Halloween. But, I mean, my sister will, like, poke fun at me all the time. Like, remember that fucking Halloween you were a present? And I'm like, shut the hell up. But yeah, we're catching Pokemon right now. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention, but we're going against a Pidgey. Did I catch Rotata already? I think I remember that being first in my lineup. But yeah, we had, like, Rattly the Rotata. Oh, that's a Survivor reference, if you didn't know. Because there was, uh... Oh, did I run away? Okay, well, um... This is a, kind of a short episode, I mean, it's like still 28 minutes, but, um, I mean, we still get quite a bit done. Like, I tried a bit harder to, um, how do I say it, like, to just, like, know what to do in the episodes ahead of time. Because when I was doing Sapphire, I mean, I know that game, like, pretty well, but, like, when I'm doing, like, two or three episodes in one sitting, it's like, okay, like, how far do I plan on going? And, like, just all that stuff. I mean, I kind of did that a bit, but in this game, like, I... I really just, like... Um... There's, like, a point on, like, episode 15. I know I'm going way far ahead, but... Like... I... I, like, cut down a lot of trainers, because I'm like, eh, if I want to beat this game, like... I need to get there immediately. To the destination. But I... I do skip, like, a few routes... It is a bit unfortunate, but I justified it by saying that in Sapphire I skipped a few routes. If I burped a little bit there, it's, I'm sorry. Like It's hard sitting here for half an hour straight just rambling on. Um, I just woke up because, like, I mean, it's like 9.30. I want summer break. I've been sleeping in way too hard. But, like, sometimes now my mom's just like, oh, it's my lunch break, I'm gonna come home and eat, and then, like, I don't like recording when my parents are conscious here. I mean, like, I don't record when they're sleeping, because, like, my bedroom is, like, one room away from them. But, like, my mom will just, like, come here, eat, watch, the like, fucking the news or something, I don't know. And it's like, oh, well, if I was doing anything... I have to, like, put that on pause. I mean, if I'm playing a game and she's just in the other room, like, she won't be like, why don't you want to talk to me? Like, ugh, like, I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of, like, really antisocial and kind of mean of me, but... Like, if you're doing a playthrough of something like Pokemon where you gotta have half an hour... I mean, you don't, but, like, the way I'm doing this, like... Yeah, I'd like to just have half an hour or an hour where I know that no one will interrupt me from talking. And uh, hopefully the phone won't be ringing as much as last year. Um, like a few months ago, it would ring like minimum two or three times between 9 a.m. and noon. And like, it would always just be robots, so I won't even answer, but sometimes my mom will call at noon. And then she's like, oh, if you hear me on the answering machine, like, pick it up, because it's me. <laughs> it's like, well, do I risk it? I don't know. And then, uh, like, last week, my dad... Okay, so my sister bought a new car, like, two years ago or something. And then my dad's just been, like, trying to repair her old car and sell it. And, like, I apparently it's not going too well. I'm not, like, super invested in his repairing stuff. But, like... I don't remember what he was expecting, like, at least a thousand dollars, even though, uh... I mean, I don't know too much about cars, so I don't know how well the car actually is running, or how it was before my sister bought a new car. I suppose it wouldn't turn on a lot sometimes. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to remember. That was quite a while ago. And that wasn't, like... I mean, that was, like, when she would go to work, and I didn't have a job yet. Well, actually, no, I had a job. I've been working for three years, almost. So, that never mind that. But it, it would happen occasionally, just, like, even, like, longer than when the car officially, like, stopped. Because, I mean, you wouldn't just, like, 
assume everything's a one-time fluke. Eh, I mean, anyway, I'm kind of rambling on this anyways. I'm not even talking about the Pokemon game. Uh, so let's talk about that. So we're in Viridian Forest, which is... One of the most iconic parts of Pokemon, I guess I'd say. I think a lot of the Kanto region is iconic, but then again it is, like, my second Pokemon game, and, uh, I guess we're backtracking. I think I do a little bit of editing here, let's see if I do it. Hey, I did some editing, I don't edit too much, um, for, like, teleporting, mainly because, like, in the later half of the game, I never need to leave areas, I usually will have, like, potions stocked on me. But in the early game, for some reason, I just didn't buy any potions. I suppose, like, when I played through Sapphire, I didn't buy, like, any potions until the Elite Four came up. But yeah, we're just going against Weedles, getting String Shotted and Poison Stung. Uh, Squirtle's at level 8, which is, like, probably a bit lower than I'd normally do on a non-Let's Play playthrough. I'd probably try and get Squirtle up to level 10 before I... or, like, at least 10 before, like, I'm going deep into the forest, even though this dungeon is pretty easy. But I also discovered a little, uh, exploit, because, like, sometimes I like to watch speedruns. I think I've made that clear on past Let's Plays. But apparently the Viridian Forest, the... I don't know if it's, like, the... It's not, obviously not, like, the debug stuff, but, like, I guess the, the, the dev route is, uh, I guess people would call it. Like, there are parts of the grass in this forest where it is a straight line where you won't even run into a single Pokemon. Like, it's just programmed to have a 0% chance. And there's like, this one speedrunner called Worcester. He used to play Pokemon all the time. Um, he had, like, a video where he... I don't know if he discovered the route or he was just explaining how the route goes. But, yeah, there's, like, little paths in, like, every single part of this forest. I guess that the, the main path to get to the end, because that's a pretty, uh... Par or not parallel fucking... Yeah, I'm trying to remember words now. Uh, fuck. It, well, it's straightforward. That's not the word I want to use. Um, man, that's gonna piss me off, because that's, that's a word I use, but, like, kind of often. Especially when you talk about video games. But, um, yeah, they're, like, indicated by a rock, and I think the grass sprite might be a bit different... But, like, if you see on the very left there, it's, like, a weird footprint kind of thing. So, like, the grass there, or, like, the row of grass below it, like, there's no Pokemon counters. I think that one was a bit lucky. But, like, see that footprint there? That means the bottom row. There's no encounters. And I kind of guess on this one, I think the middle one is. Or I just got lucky. And if I see, like, footprints on the right, so go on the right column. You won't get any encounters. This one, it's on the middle. I thought it was on the left because it's hard to see when it's moving and I only have like three seconds to analyze it. But I run into a wheel right away, so then I just move to the middle column. And I, it looks like I do fight this Weedle. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I... Well, I mean, I do fight it, so obviously... Oh yeah, I catch it. Duh. Okay. So, uh, uh yeah, got a Weedle. How many Pokemon do I have now? Four? And only one of these four Pokemon is going to be on my final team. So I obviously have to give it with... Uh, I got talking. I used to, like, not do that thing where I go, like, say three words at the same time. And then you're going to go, Ugh. And then I say, like, oh, okay, whatever. But you got to name your Weedle, Weedle Boys! As, as in, like, Weedle Boys, but Weedle. And it's always fun coming up with names for the Pokemon that don't matter, because I come up with them on the spot. See the footprints on the middle, though, again. But this last part, um, there are no dev roots, so you will run into Pokemon here. But yeah, we're on the final stretch of the forest. Um, yeah. In, like, X and Y, they... They put Viridian Forest in the fucking game. And that really disappointed me, I am a Gen 1-er. So, like, I think I've been a bit more lenient, but, like, really, when I see Viridian Forest in, like, five Pokemon games later, I'm like, uh, that's a really big cop-out thing. Like, well, I, I guess I'm just trying to defend the first generation instead of being like, wow, what a cool reference. And, like, 
Pokemon's trying to, like, bring in all of the... of the Gen 1 people back or something. Because I guess that was, like, their biggest market. So, like, in, uh, like, Sun and Moon with the Alolan Pokemon, like, those are all Kanto Pokemon. It's like, let's bring the Gen 1ers in with, like, Ice Vulpix and Fire Marowak and, like... Like, those are cool, but, like... Eh, did, did you need to do them? I mean, I think uh, Ninetales is, like, one of the best Pokemon. Let's get that out of the way. But, um... I don't know. I, th I, thought, I thought the Alolan forms are cool, but, like... I like using new Pokemon in my playthroughs, and then, like, in my Moon playthrough, I had Alola Ninetales and Alola Muck, and then in my Ultra Moon playthrough, or I got Ultra Sun, I had, like, Alola, Alola Lem. <laughs> I think competitive think people call it Alola Lem, but it's Alola Golem. And I think I used one other thing. I really don't remember. That playthrough went by in, like, four days, because I just, like, I don't know if I'd say I was really into it, but it kind of went by quick, even though it's it was like a 20-hour playthrough. But I'll probably talk about Ultra Sun a bit in this uh, long Let's Play, because in my Sapphire Let's Play, I was just bashing Pokemon Moon all the time, and um, Ultra Sun wasn't as bad, I guess I just knew what to prepare for. I didn't notice as many as the bad, or as many of the bad things, but... I did have to heal up my Pokemon a lot, so I guess I would say the game was difficult, but I don't know if it's difficult because my Pokemon are slow, or because the opponent's Pokemon are, like, actually balanced in levels. Like, if my Pokemon are level 33 in a route, their Pokemon will be between, like, 31 and 34. And I like that kind of balance, because, like, in this game, there's a lot of points where I'm just, like, 10 levels ahead of everyone. But it does balance itself out towards the end a bit. But, like... I don't know, but because like, like all the new Pokemon were just like fucking base 30 speed, and that means you're not outspeeding shit. So then, like, okay, if I have the wrong lead, and they're gonna use like a super effective attack on me, that means I gotta switch out my Pokemon. So that means the Pokemon coming in will take a like a big hit because like I guess the bulk isn't super good. But like, yeah, I'll take a big hit, and then I'm slower, so. For my first attack, I'm already gonna get hit a second time. And so there's a possibility I'll faint if I'm using like a Slazzle or something. And then, okay, if that doesn't, well, I guess Slazzle's faster, but. Um, then, like, third turn, okay, if I didn't kill them in one hit, which is like never gonna happen, then I probably will die on the third hit or the fourth hit. So. Like, oh, guess who has to use revive and potions, or switch out, and then you still have to use a lot of potions. Me. So, like, that was really annoying. And then they heal your Pokemon every route. And that's not fun. I don't like having my Pokemon heal every route, because, like, that means I probably waste potions, but, like, oh, yeah, well, you have money, so that's okay. But y you get to a point where you just kind of predict that they're going to bring in How or Lily to be like, oh, hey, I'm gonna heal your Pokemon, like, uh, fuck you if you just, just spent money on potions and used them. But, yeah, um, this trainer just fucking rocked my ass. I think he hacks me if I'm remembering right. I wasn't watching too much. I mean, I watch, but, like, I don't, like, absorb the contents of the video, because I'm just rambling on for almost 25 minutes straight now. Well, I guess it's 24, because I have 20 seconds of the intro. Yes, 24 minutes and, uh, like, 20 seconds about. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh... I was gonna say, like, Pokemon... I was talking about this, like, 10, 12 minutes ago. Like, my favorite Pokemon from this generation. I'll probably go into that a bit more in the next episode, because uh, this one ends in, like, 4 minutes about. But, I mean, yeah, I really like Sandshrew, although I never have used one. Uh, I think Sand Slash's uh, design is kind of kind of meh. I don't know. I just really like the brick design on Sand Shrew. and like I guess Sand Slash just didn't translate well to 3D games because I think his 3D model is kind of weird. I don't know. Its its arms are just like non-existent, but its hands are like meaty and big. It would make sense if you saw Sand Slash's uh, 3D model. But, uh, what else is there? Like, Ninetales, 
Well, okay, let's go back to Sand Slash. Like, I would probably use Sand Slash in Gen 3, back when, like, I, like, didn't care what generation the Pokemon was from. Because I did, I mean, I was catching every Pokemon, but, like, when I went to the desert and caught a Sand Shrew, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I got a Sand Shrew. I mean, obviously, I didn't use it, because, uh, well, I, I keep saying obviously, with, like, really non-obvious stuff, but I didn't use Sand Shrew because... Literally, my first playthrough was exclusively Blaziken, and like my first playthrough of Red was exclusively Blastoise. I, I think my second playthrough I actually used like Charmander or something, but that's aside from the point. I got like uh, nine more hours, eight more hours to talk about Pokemon. I mean, we're gonna be going against Brock pretty soon, but oh man, we're going to the Pokemart. Gonna buy some uh, nice goodies here. Get some potions. It sucks at the beginning of the game, because, like, you just don't have any money. But, like, once you get to the second gym, it's like, Yay, I got money now, and... Hopefully you're not spending it all on Pokeballs. Or, like, a TM or something. I don't know if they give you options to buy TMs this early into games. That's not a detail I really remember. But, yeah, here is Brock, the first gym leader. I'm kind of surprised they got here this quick. Because I don't, I think I was expecting to be held up in Viridian Forest for a bit longer. But Brock special, he specializes in rock types, but I don't believe there are any pure rock types in this game. So all the rock types are rock ground and, or uh, I guess for the case of Aerodactyl, who's rock flying. But yeah, they're rock ground, which means they are four times a week to water instead of just two times a week like a normal rock type. So that means uh, a bubble would probably just like instantly kill them, except for Onyx, who uh, takes it like a man. Oh man, I don't have enough time to talk about it, but fucking Brock in Pokemon Yellow is impossible to beat. Yeah, I only have like one more minute to talk about this, but I'll probably expand on that next episode if I remember. I'll probably talk about it on the fifth episode, because something happens there that would uh, make me reference that time. And I'm just rambling on talking about talking about it. But yeah, like, Brock has just, like, rock types, and on Pokemon Yellow, your starter is Pikachu. So they expect you to, like, know to get a Nidoran, because Nidoran can learn Double Kick at, like, level 16 or something. And it's like, how would you know to do that? So... I didn't know about Nidoran, because, like, it, it's on a route to the way left. I mean, I think I knew about that route, but, like, I guess I didn't consider Nidoran being a viable option. But, yeah, I just caught a Pidgey, raised that bitch to, like, level 30 or 40, and then I finally beat Brock after a couple hours. But that's it for the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a like as well. Oh, wait, it's, we're not even ending yet. Come on, guys. Well, I mean, that is it for the episode. Uh, next episode, we're going through, like, Route 3. I don't know the Route's names, because they don't tell you what they are, but... Yeah, stay tuned for that. Oh, and we're doing Mountain Moon, too. So, uh, feel free to leave a like as well if the channel grows. Subscribe to the updates on my uploads as soon as they happen. But until then, see you next time.